So this is G485 Homework Booklet Question 2. Uh, so we've got these two small metal spheres uh, hung, uh, hanging from a string. B's held on a rod. We've got different charges on either of them. Uh, and we've got a separation between their centres. So what's the first question? We're asked to determine the magnitude and direction of the electric field strength at the midpoint between the two, two spheres. So maybe the, uh, that's... The thing that people most often uh, miss is you're being asked to find it at the midpoint. Now, electric uh, field strength is a vector quantity, so it, uh, we can simply add up the vector field strength due to A and due to B. Uh, and we'll just need to be a little bit careful when we're thinking about directions. So we've got uh, spheres, point charges essentially, so we can think in terms of um, E equals Q. There's Q for B, 4 pi epsilon naught R squared, which asks the distance away we're interested in. Uh, and so let's work it out for B. Why on earth did I do B before A? No idea. Uh, oh, because it's on the left. So there's EB, which refers to that one. So Q over 4 pi epsilon naught. And the position, the distance away of the position we're interested in from the centre is 1.75 times 10 to the minus 2, halfway between the two. Uh, do that sum and we end up with that. And I think it's easiest just to think about the direction of that. It's a f uh, electrical field strength. Uh, we're at this position here, so that's going to be uh, the field strength the vector direction of the field strength is the direction a positive charge would experience a force, which I hope obviously is towards the negatively charged B, so towards the left. I then do exactly the same thing for uh, A. So here's A, and you'll see it's the same format of equation. I end up with a different number, obviously. It's going to be five quarters as much. In fact, I could have just uh, taken that number and multiply it by 5 over 4. That would have been easier. That would have been a really good idea. Why didn't I do that? Um, and you end up with this value, 1.47 times 10 to the 5. Now again, this is the point we're interested in, halfway between A and B. A is positively charged, so it's repelling a positive test charge at that point. So it is also providing a field at that point uh, to the left. Therefore, Though the magnitude is going to simply add, they're both pushing leftwards, and we end up with the electric field strength of those two numbers added together, 2.64 times 10 to the 5 newtons per coulomb, volts per metre would have been just as good, and the direction is to the left. Not a gentle start. Show the electric force on A at 1.5 times 10 sorry, the electric force on A is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 4. So now we can consider uh, the force between these two, just using the Coulomb law equation, uh, just using that data that we've been given, uh, and we lob it in to that equation. So F is QQ over 4 pi epsilon naught R squared. There's Q of B, there's Q of A, 4 pi, the value of epsilon naught, maybe I could have said earlier, from the uh, data sheet and the separation now is 3.5 times 10 to the minus 2 and we end up with 1.47 times 10 to the minus 4. It's a show question so I've been absolutely explicit in what I'm doing. I have definitely want to make sure I get the equation. I want to do the substitutions and I'm going to give my answer to an additional significant figure so that they can see that I've really done it. Uh, and then moving on to part C. We're now given the mass of the sphere, um, 4.5 times 10 to the minus 5 kilograms, and crucially it tells us how they want us to do the question here. They want us to do this by resolving vectors, you know, uh, or by using a vector triangle to determine the angle theta made by the string uh, with the vertical. Now, the Two, well, probably three ways you can do this. Um, you could... The most obvious way to resolve would be to resolve vertically, and you'd get W is equal to T uh, cos 30, from which I could work out... Because I know what W is, I could work out what... 
no, I don't know the angles, sorry. Uh, so yeah, I could get W equals T cos 30. I could resolve horizontally. Fe, which is also known, um, would be T cos 30. I could divide one by the other. And what dividing one by the other would do would both be uh, to eliminate T. T would cancel out but also would give me, if I did it the right way around, sine divided by cos, which is equal to tan. And so I'd end up with the, the tan of the angle as one of these divided by the other. Um, personally, I find it easier to quickly draw out the triangle. Uh, so there's my space diagram, my free body diagram showing me the forces. And now here's my vector diagram, W straight down, Fe straight across, T's in that direction, there's the angle because that's the angle between T and the vertical and I know that W is vertical. I do need to quickly work out W and need to do that either way. Um, and then uh, the electrical force we know from the previous part. And then tan of theta from the vector diagram is simply Fe divided by W. Fe divided by W is there and do uh, an inverse tan and arc tan on that. And we end up with 18.8 degrees. Uh, so that's fairly straightforward. If you want to challenge yourself, the clever way, the cleverest way of all to do it, perhaps, but probably also most difficult, would be to take components in a direction uh, that's something like that. You'd need to think very carefully about where theta was. But if you could take components in that direction, uh, then obviously with T being perpendicular to it, T would never appear and you could get probably pretty much to that statement uh, quite quickly. Again, we'd be relying on tan is sine over cos, uh, but that would be a neat little exercise to try out if you wanted to push yourself. So that was G485 homework booklet question uh, two. Got there in the end. Thank you.